Um, but um, I want to just share some of the very well-known passage of Scripture, and then I want to just connect some things together um, that I believe is the word for grace and truth, church. Are you, right? you ready? You ready to listen? I promise you, if you listen quickly, I'll preach quickly. Okay, so it will be a microwave sermon, depending on how microwave you, you, you listen. Okay, so let's go for it. I'm going to go pretty quickly. I'm going to touch on some scriptures. And uh, is that Athel? Athel Trailer? And Janine? So good to see you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> so have you got it? John chapter 10. And immediately you say John chapter 10, I'm sure many of you will know exactly where I'm going. So Jesus comes and he goes into, remember that the scribes, the Pharisees are there. They're all sitting and um, um, listening to him. He's teaching his disciples. And Jesus begins to talk about the, um, the true shepherd. The true shepherd doesn't take shortcuts. He comes via the door, doesn't climb over the wall. The wall. All that climb over the wall are thieves and robbers. And Jesus was basically talking as the true shepherd of the sheep, you need to be born. You need to be a person. Now, oh, God, we could really this. <laughs> Sorry, <clears throat> I'll get my act together. Right, it's done. But you know the story, and he goes on and he says, I am the good shepherd. Woo. Now, that's a good place. And he said, I know my sheep, my sheep know me. Now, here is a good verse that Prophet Kerbis taught me, and I was blessed with it, is that as Christians, we don't hear the devil. We hear our flesh, but we don't hear the devil. Because he said, he said, my sheep know my voice, but they do not know the voice of a stranger. So anywhere you can say amen, all right? I, I do better on amens. It will glory or hallelujah or something. So you don't know the voice of the stranger. The stranger is the devil. We know the voice of the true shepherd. So we just got to tune into that voice and not our own, own um, hearing from our flesh. But the basic is, he said, I am the good shepherd. I lay down my life for the sheep. You know, I, I lay down the, the gate. I open it and the sheep come in and go out. But there is a background to this particular story that Jesus was telling. He wasn't just being random. He didn't just look and see a shepherd herding some sheep or leading some sheep somewhere and then, and then came up with this novel idea. You understand that the Jews knew the scriptures. And there is a narrative, a background story to this. And that's what I want to pick up. In Jeremiah 23, and the first few verses, Jeremiah the prophet, speaking on behalf of God, is addressing the shepherds of Israel, the leaders of Israel. And, and um, God is basically saying through the prophet, I've got an issue with you shepherds, because you don't feed the sheep. <clears throat> you feed yourselves, you take care of yourselves, but you don't tend the sheep. And then, then Jeremiah prophesies. He says, from David, I will raise up a righteous branch from the line of David. And so immediately there, the prophecy of Jeremiah sets the backdrop. And along comes Jesus, basically. And he's saying, the, the shepherd of the branch of David that Jeremiah prophesied, this is me. And, and you know, the, the scribes and Pharisees are absolutely quiet. They don't say anything. Um, Jesus, in this, is claiming to be God himself, or the Son of God. He's putting himself. Because in Ezekiel 34, if we have a look at a couple of uh, verses in Ezekiel 34, we will see the whole chapter. But listen to what he says. You eat the curds. You clothe yourselves with the wool. You slaughter the choice animals. But you do not take care of the flock. You have not strengthened the weak, healed the sick, bound up the injured. You have not brought back the strays or searched for the lost. You have ruled them harshly and brutally. So they were scattered because there was no shepherd. And then in verse 11, Ezekiel 34, this is what the prophet says. For thus saith the Lord God, behold, I, even I, will both search for and seek out my sheep. And so Jesus comes. John chapter 10 says, I'm the good shepherd. All this is in their backdrop, their background. All this is in the history. And suddenly, Jesus puts himself into a time zone. He puts himself into a place. Now, these are some of the things that I want you to hear. I want, to hear, I want you to hear things like, it's time. Okay? 
Can you, what do you say? It's time, it's time, it's time, say it's time. Say it's now time. Say it's my time. Is that okay? Good. It's my time. So it's my time now. Good. And, and so it's my time now. It's our time now. So Jesus comes, he says, I'm the good shepherd. But I want you to see something. There are a whole lot of things. And this is where now um, it's, it's going to get prophetic for, for Grace and Truth Church. So I hope you're all ears and all listening. I want you to take things on board. So Ezekiel um, um, continues with his prophecy in, um, in, in Ezekiel chapter 34. But um, it's very interesting that um, when he said that he was the good shepherd, he was talking about something that was going to happen and uh, something new, and, and this was the time. Now, I'm just going to park the shepherd thing for a while. Is that okay? Can we just put the shepherd thing one side? Are you all with me? Uh, pretend it's like CSI, you know, with those big glass panels, and they do things and they move it here and they do things and they move it there. I'm going to connect it all shortly for you. So let's just go to another thing. In Isaiah... Isaiah is, is incredible. You cannot read the book of Revelations without reading Isaiah, the prophet, and Jeremiah and Ezekiel, but particularly Isaiah. So in Isaiah, Isaiah starts to prophesy. And he talks about, God says, forget the former things. Don't regard the former things, the things of the past. He says, even now, a new thing is springing up. Do you not perceive it? That's the season that you're in, Athel. Is that you're in a, in a new time, a new thing. There's something new springing up. And Isaiah says, do you not perceive it? And of course, it would be, have to be something they perceived with the eye of faith. Because around them, they couldn't see anything. They were heading for exile, for destruction. You know, it looked like the end. But God was talking about something beyond that. And he said, behold... I make all things new. Everybody say new. Okay, so there's a new thing and it's time and it's your time because he's doing something new. So that's the word. And so several places he says this, Isaiah 35, 1 to 7, I'm just taking one verse. And the parched ground shall become a pool and the thirsty land springs of water. Everybody say the parched ground. Right now, you guys around here are in the grip of a drought. Um, <clears throat> you, you are extremely conscious of a lack of water. Now, in biblical days, that would be the terms and conditions of the law. Is that okay? Are you all okay so far? I, I don't want to bog you down, but if you understand this, you're going to understand so much of the Bible. But, but the terms and conditions of the law... When they agreed to the law with God on Mount Sinai, God said, you know, if you obey me, blessings. If you disobey, you break my laws, curses. And amongst them, an initial, the initial part of the curses was there would be no rain, which would mean it would be a drought. If the drought persisted, it would go into a famine. So in other words, it would affect their livelihood because they were shepherds. They were agricultural people. They needed the rain. They needed the seasons. All of their festivals were linked to times of the year and different harvests and different seasons and different festivals. So God was saying, your economy will go. Your prosperity will go if there's no rain. And of course, for us in the, in the New Testament, things begin to change because um, uh, all the prophets came and they prophesied according to the terms and conditions of the law. That's why they would always prophesy, get back to God, get back to obeying the law, get back to doing things right, because then it will rain. Otherwise, the heavens will be brass, brass and the earth will be iron. There will be no rain. It will be hard. You will have no income. You will have no livelihood. There will not be blessing. So rain early on was equated with the blessing of God. Everybody said Amen. So in Isaiah 44, he says, I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offspring. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Pour water on him. Is I'm thirsty. For, for other water as well. I'm really thirsty. I want God to move. Amen. I want God just to pour out floods on the dry ground. I want him to send not only physical rain, I want him to send spiritual rain. If you've ever had spiritual rain, if you've ever had the rain of God in your life, you don't want to live any other way. 
it messes you up for life. Isn't that right? And so I'm, I'm desiring just, you know, God to move. So in Isaiah 43, very quickly, behold, I will do a new thing. So what was the new thing? Remember the shepherd thing is part. The shepherd. So I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The way in the wilderness will be a river. God intended waters of blessing. Everybody good? So it then became prophetic of, symbolic of, the whole New Testament. The New Testament for us is not about drought. It's not about famine. It's not about a lack of blessing. The new thing that Isaiah was prophesying was a, 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 a life of continual rain. A life of the abundance of water. A life of no lack of water to produce crops, to produce a harvest, to produce an income, to produce prosperity. And so for us, um, as New Testament believers, everything in our lives should be about abundance of rain. Is that okay? It should be raining upon us, amen? And it is, and it will be. Is that okay? So now I want to start bringing the shepherd together, and I want to start bringing the rains together, because he's prophesying a time, okay? So we've already looked at Jeremiah, we've looked at Ezekiel, and he says, God says, God says, I've got a problem with you, shepherd, so I'm going to be your shepherd. I, I will, a righteous branch of David, and we know Jesus was called the son of David. Then Jesus comes, John chapter 10, stands in front of the Pharisees and says, you want to know something? Let me let you into a little secret. I'm the shepherd. And suddenly, Jeremiah, Ezekiel's prophecies start to make sense. Well, I just want to connect it now. The two topics, water or rain and the shepherd. So, Isaiah, I mean Ezekiel, Ezekiel 34. The same passage that we looked at, but just a little bit lower down. Ezekiel 34, 26. Listen to what God says. Further up. He talks about, I, even I, will be your shepherd. I will seek you out. Then in 26, man, I love those old choruses this morning. I think we, we'll have to find this one. This is what God said. Ezekiel 34, 26, when the shepherd comes, listen to this. I will make them and the places around about my hill. The hill of the Lord. City set on a hill is the church. The hill. I will make them and the places around about my hill a blessing. And I will cause the showers to come down in its season. There shall be showers, showers of blessing. Woo. Man, we used to sing that when I was a kid in those like revival type meetings when the Holy Ghost was moving and Holy Spirit would come and we'd be thinking, you know, mercy drops round us are falling, but for those showers we plead. Then we'd sing showers, showers of blessings we need. Come on, we need showers. I'm praying this morning you get saturated. I'm praying this morning that you get wet with the presence and the glory of God. Amen. I'm praying this morning that he just, you know, it's the time. From the time the shepherd appeared, God said, I will send blessing on you and all about on my hill. You shall be a blessing. There shall be showers, showers of blessing. We should be wet in his presence. Amen. So I want you I want you just to be ready at any moment, okay, to get saturated. <laughs> I tell you, when I walked in, the presence of God was so awesome in the worship. I just, I, I was battling to sing. The tears were just flowing because I want more of him, amen. I want just more of the Holy Ghost. So, amen. So, let's just press on a little bit more. So, um, Zechariah prophesied. Zechariah was just not far before the New Testament. And this prophet also prophesies. Now, listen to what this prophet says. So, here's the shepherd. I'm the good shepherd. What would happen when the shepherd would come? A new thing, Isaiah. What would the new thing look like? Waters, rivers in the wilderness. Why? Because, because when the shepherd comes, there will be showers of blessing. Showers 
of rain cause rivers to flow. And it will be blessing. Is that okay? And now listen to what Zechariah says. He picks up on the theme and then he just adds a little bit more. And, 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 and I want us to be this kind of church. Listen to what Zechariah 10, 1 to 3 says. Ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. <clears throat> I'm going to touch on the former latter rains in a moment. He says, but in the time of the latter rain, ask ye of the Lord rain. So for us now, as New Testament believers, um, I, as far as I understand, um, the Cape, <clears throat> you get most of your rain in winter, is that right? And so praying for rain now is asking for rain out of its season. But fortunately, fortunately, God hears prayer. So we believe that, that rain will come. Amen? Even before your due season. But for us as New Testament believers, <clears throat> when did the right season for us begin to ask for rain? I will just touch on that. But let's just go back to this um, particular verse here, verse 1. Zechariah chapter 10. Is everybody following me? It's not too much information. I want to give you a, a background because you're going to start to understand a lot of these scriptures in the Old Testament. But he said, ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain, so the Lord shall make bright clouds. I've just got to throw this in here because, you know, I love any, anything that's supernatural, you know, anything that's God and godly. Um, the Derby translation, those bright clouds are thunder clouds. The lightning clouds, the kind of clouds that bring rain. So Darby's translation of the Bible here says, God who makes the lightnings, or the lightnings to flash. And so, ask ye the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain, so the Lord shall send lightnings. I, I just hope you get excited. I'm, you are excited, eh? I mean, yeah, you're enjoying this. I can feel you drinking in. All right, every now and then just go, mm-hmm, yeah, glory, you know? And, and he says he makes bright clouds, lightning clouds, and, gave, and give them showers of rain to everyone grass in the field. Now he talks about the current state of Israel, saying you've chased after idols, you're in trouble. And he said the reason is that you went after the idols because there's no shepherd. So immediately Zechariah connects us to Jeremiah 23, Ezekiel 34, John chapter 10. And he says there was no shepherd. And uh, God says all of that is going to change for you people. For my people. All you've got to do is in the season of rain, particularly the season of the latter rain, ask for rain. And I, the Lord, will make the clouds. I will send the lightnings. You will have rain. Now this sounds to me like a good promise. Amen. This sounds to me like, wow. Even wrote you in my notes, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I was sitting preparing yesterday, and I just kept saying to Bev, yeah, I'm enjoying this message. The whole time I was sitting and preparing, I was saying, rain on me. Rain on me, Jesus, send the rain. I'm asking for rain in the time of the shepherd. So what God is encouraging us to do, church, saints, we're in the time of the rain. I'm going to just explain it a little bit more. Is prayer based on knowledge? is the correct prayer. It's the right prayer. If we know what God says we can ask for, you can ask for it with 100% confidence that God is going to do it. Is that okay? So if he says, in the time of the rain, well, we've got the first indication that the time of the rain was when the shepherd would appear because he said, I will send showers of blessing all around. Now he says, when there's a shepherd, you can ask because the no shepherd, no rain. When there's a shepherd, then you can ask for rain in its season. So we can ask. We can say, God, would you send deluges of rain? The next time Pastor Carl stands up to preach, let him get so drunk in the Holy Ghost. You know, then just get zap adapt, you know. When he stands up, he's like, <laughs> I was sharing the other night, and I said, uh, I was in... Um, a place of revival in 1994. I was so desperate for revival. I just sold stuff. I went over. If I heard that there was revival, I was there, you know. And um, in 1993, the Lord uh, um, instructed me to go on a 40-day fast, 40 days of fasting and prayer, which I did. And in that time, he spoke to me about revival coming. 
in an open vision. He showed me flying over to England and being part of revival in those nations. And that's, that was um, 1993, the first time I went. It was exactly 10 years after being in Bible college. And this is what the Lord said to me. He said, go and build bridges with revival ministries back to South Africa. And then be part of the revival that I'm doing in England. And I said to the Lord in my profound state, um, a state of belief, I said, but I haven't even heard of revival in England. The last time I was there, Raynard Bonker said this, preaching in England is like plowing on a rock. <clears throat> it was very tough. And uh, it changed, it changed. 1993, when I walked out at the airport, I could feel the whole atmosphere in the country had changed. 1994, I started to get, um, you know, started to hear of, of revivals and things happening. So I also went to a place where revivals were happening. It broke out all over the United Kingdom, Ireland, Wales, and I was privileged until 2007 to itinerate a lot, <clears throat> also into Egypt, and uh, see massive revivals breaking out there, preaching in Catholic monasteries, and um, <clears throat> first night, they're very suspicious of foreigners, first night there was maybe four or five people, but before I went, the Lord gave me two full cap pages in two columns of Egyptian names. Just every time I went to pray, it would give me names. And they weren't all Abdullah and Muhammad. <laughs> they have got lots of other names. And uh, the Lord gave me two full cap pages of names. And um, what I would do before each meeting, I would pray, for the, pray and say, Lord, which names? And uh, so the first meeting, because they like, they're there and it's like, I dare you to bless us because they're very suspicious of Westerners. And, um, you know, secret police is tracking you all the time and, you know, all of that kind of thing. And uh, we'd have to meet in secret locations. And uh, in that meeting, I think I called out the names of nearly every person. Uh, and there was only 10, 12 people. And I got just about all of the names, called them out, prophesied over the next night. <clears throat> they said, no, we're meeting another hall. There was um, nearly 100 people. The next night, there was more. By the Friday night, there wasn't a hall big enough in Cairo. Um, and they, everywhere they, they were saying, come to the meetings, people flocked, they were jam-packed, the cops were driving past, checking because there was people flooding from everywhere, and they were saying, come, there's a prophet from South Africa, and he's going to call your name out. <laughs> How about that for a setup? There's a, you know, a bit of pressure, eh? And uh, the power of God just hit, we had incredible times, and then in uh, um, 2000, no, no, 1994, I went to Armenia, um, a country that had been completely rocked in its breakaway from um, the Soviet Union, <clears throat> and there was absolutely nothing in the country. Poor, poor, poor. Not a petrol station, not a shop, not a grocery store, nothing. And um, <clears throat> freezing cold, you know, load shedding, two hours a day electricity, two hours a day water. They used their bars as storage. They wouldn't even turn the, the taps off. Just put the plug in and just let the water flow, and then it would overflow. And that was the story. So we bathed in little buckets and things like that. 1994. 1994, they took me to a, a place right near the border with Turkey, and there was Mount Ararat in the background. And uh, I, I don't want to get lost with this. I want to share that. But, um, and um, they took me to um, this church, and it was the monastery of St. Gregory. And um, <clears throat> they told me quickly, this, this, told me the story about um, St. Gregory. Um, the apostles Bar um, Bartholomew and Thaddeus had both preached in Armenia some centuries earlier. But it went into complete paganism and the, the king was a, completely opposed to Christianity. And he went off his head just like Nebuchadnezzar, became a beast of the field like a wild boar, he was eating grass his hair grew long, just exactly the same as Nebuchadnezzar. And uh, <clears throat> what happened was, just prior to that, the king um, sentenced um, Gregory to death because of his preaching of the gospel. But the people loved him and they didn't want to kill him, so they took him to a deep pit, it may, maybe two stories deep, just around like a well. And they threw him in there, and they left him there. Um, it was like 13 years he was in this pit. Completely, you can't see a thing. You put your hand in front of your face, you can't see it. For 13 years, he was in the pit. An elderly lady, um, they put a, a seal over it, like a, a dome over it. She scratched a little, tiny little hole through, 
and she would go a few times a day, um, every day, and she would drop bread and water through, and that's how she kept St. Gregory alive. Um, <clears throat> in that 13 years, he was in this pit, and they said, come, John. They, they would call me Jean. Come, Jean. And everything is, um, they ended with Jan, J-A-N, like Jan. So it was, come, Jean, Jan. Jean, Jan. Jan means dear, you know. Come, dear John. Dear her, John. So, <laughs> so, so I was dear John. <clears throat> Every letter I got from Bevy in the army was dear John. <laughs> I'm writing this to you today. <laughs> okay, the younger people won't know. Speak to the older folks. They know. <laughs> but uh, but uh, John, 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 we want to show you this. He climbed under the ladder. It was black from years of the candles and things because it became then um, a pilgrimage site. Climbed down. Then they switched off the light, and we were in the inky black darkness. I went down on my haunches, my back against the wall, and um, it was almost like out of the stones of the wall, prayers came. Prayers came and surrounded me, prayers, prayers. And I was sitting there on my haunches, and all I could hear was revival for Armenia. It's what Gregory paid prayed for for 13 years it was like it was like the stones that absorbed his prayers the stones began to speak his prayers his intercessions and and I, I was gripped with it I was gripped it just it penetrated my being it was like I could hear his groans his travails and 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 we, we eventually we got up and we left and I kept saying to the pastor pastor Ashard I said revival is coming to Armenia I'm telling you pastor Ashard revival is coming to Armenia going uh, come John come John let's go eat something John John you know and uh, you know he didn't have that experience I had the experience and uh, God was so good because 1994 went past in 2001 they were celebrating 1700 years of Christianity it was the first Christian nation in the world Armenia even the alphabet was given to given by revelation of God they write the alphabet out in a block the letters this way and it doesn't matter which way you go with those words that those letters form it forms a different name of God incredible nation there are churches there that date back to 315 AD when Gregory was preaching and um, and I said so, revival is coming revival is coming in 2001 they invited us to go and preach and I fasted I prayed I sought God and um, I was asking Lord give me messages give me sermons what do I preach nothing I didn't hear nothing I didn't see anything God wasn't showing me anything anything that he wanted to do there was his best kept secret you know and, and, and nothing, I fasted, I prayed, 40 days I fasted and prayed, waiting on God. What is the word for Armenia? What is the word for Armenia? When I got there, they, we started um, the meetings on the Monday afternoon, I shared a little bit, but Tuesday morning, the Spirit of God fell in that place. 150 key leaders from around Armenia, top intercessors, all the prophetic people. The power of God fell Tuesday all day, Wednesday all day, Thursday all day, Friday all day, morning to night. These people, religious, didn't know anything about the Spirit, got so saturated, got so drunk, they couldn't stand up. If the people came out from the kitchen anywhere near the hall, they would fall out under the power, no one to peel the potatoes, no one to cook. They were out under the power. And it went on for an entire week, an entire week. One couple... You know, it was like God was in the atmosphere. God was in there. I had hardly slept. They were saying, this church out there, that town, and we would drive hours. That pastor wants you to come. We would go there, and I would just stand up and speak. The power of God would fall. We would leave to go to another church, and the people were on the floor, rolling, shaking, getting delivered, getting filled with the Holy Spirit. We would go to another town, and this is how we went around Armenia. It started to spread over into Iran and Iraq. Uh, people from that church were phoning family members in America and saying, there's a new anointing. Put your ear close to the phone. Can't hear you. Oh, that's your deaf ear. <sighs> you know, blow. <clears throat> ah, the person falls out in America, healed, puts the phone back up. Then they're filled with joy. Then they, everybody in their community who touched down into Egypt, Armenian communities were just getting set on fire by God. It was like, it was like the atmosphere was permeated to the presence of God. If you walked out of the building, if you walked in town, you could feel there was something in the atmosphere. God took over the entire nation 
of Armenia in a week. That's a good place to say amen. Yeah, because you can't do that. That's God. Okay, let's give God a better clap. Say, come on. We, we, want, that, we want that in Port Alfred. Now you'll clap. Yeah, we want that. <laughs> we want that in Port Alfred. Woo, come on, Jesus. I, I, and um, the, the, the Lord told me that I would be praying for people high up in politics. The Lord was, even gave me names of people high up. I was amazing. And, and um, the, this man walks past me in the meeting, and I didn't know, but he's the deputy president, the vice president of Armenia. God gives me a word. That man's on the floor weeping. His wife, his kids, the power of God just touched them. Um, the church where we ministered um, in the weeks following, over the road from this church, because it was an old cinema hall, was the, um, the um, Armenian police station. And the Armenian police, kind of like our police, you know, they, they don't have a good reputation. This side of the road was the headquarters of the Armenian mafia. In the next couple of months, every single policeman was saved and in that church. Every mafia boss was saved and in that church. Okay, now that's a good place to say, wow. wow. Say it backwards, wow. wow. <laughs> say it upside down, mom. <laughs> <laughs> wow the power of God just hit the country I was back one week and the phone rang midnight and it was a brother with a very strong accent and he said uh, prophet he said this is my name he gave me his name and he said there's 20 of us pastors we are phoning you from Tehran airport in Iran we've seen the VHS cassettes of that revival Give us your bank account details. We're putting money in now. We want you to come to Tehran, to Iran. We need this here. I wasn't able to go. The next visit, a dozen of them flew into Yerevan, Armenia. We had to meet in a secret location so they wouldn't be seen. And when I got there, I said, what do your brothers want? And they just said, <laughs> they just said, lay hands on us and prophesy he says lay hands on us and prophesy we want to go back to our country with what you have I don't know if you've heard but the country with the greatest revival in the world at the moment is Iran you can google it right now in Iran there is a transformational revival that is taking place the Muslims and especially the women are fearlessly preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and people are getting powerfully saved this is the report I can send it to you if you want <clears throat> the documentary they say that Muslims are leaving Islam in their droves in their droves Iran Iran they're leaving they saying many mosques are empty they don't go to mosque. Empty. But the secret church, the underground church, is exploding. Come on, God can do it. Come on, say it's time. <clears throat> say it's here. Port Alfred. Amen. So let me, <clears throat> let me just back up. I'll just share. Just, 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 I want to just share with you the impact. <clears throat> you know, for days... <clears throat> and I'm, I'm, I'm doing everything I can not to break down but for days I couldn't I could hardly speak because of the things we saw for days if I opened my mouth I would just begin to weep I, I couldn't tell the people when I got back to England they were saying what happened I sat and cried like a baby because it was beyond anything that I'd ever experienced to witness beyond anything the power of God just seized the nation um a lot of times I would, when I preached, I would take my jacket and put it on people and, you know, the power of God would come on them and they would go from zero, from no anointing, no understanding of the Spirit into full-blown revival. One pastor, I called him out by a word of knowledge. I walked right up to him and I said to him, on your way here, you stopped in a grove of trees. 
along the road and you say to the Lord, if something doesn't happen to you today, you, you're giving up the ministry. He was sobbing on his chair and he said, exactly, it was on my way here. And um, when we went back, we, he drove with us and he said, come let me show you. He said, on the way to the meeting, this is where I was. And he took me into a grove of trees because I said, I see you kneeling in the leaves and on the twigs and you were calling out to God and you said, today, if you don't do something for me, I'm quitting. And he said, I walked into the meeting and sat down. As I sat down, you, walked, you got off the stage and you walked right up to me. And then you told me that. And then you said, brother, it's today. The power of God hit him. For four and a half months, he couldn't have church. Four and a half months. Whenever he walked into the, the door, the people would fall out on the floor. Four and a half months. Couldn't have church. So the, the driest, hardest, most law-filled pastoral couple get so powerfully zapped in the Holy Ghost. Tuesday, all day, Wednesday, all day, Thursday, all day, Friday, all day. Half the time, Pastor Ashot was laying on the stage and he was weeping. He couldn't, and I would say, Ashot, stand up and interpret for me. And he said, I can't, John. He said, you don't know what's happening. I know what's happening. I know these people. He said, look at those people. They're on fire for Jesus. And they were like, what? He would cry. So I'd have to wait. And then when he would gather himself, then I'd carry on preaching. This couple said to me, I wasn't going to tell stories, but maybe it helps to just give you a vision of something. Okay, I won't tell stories. Then I'll go back and preach. <laughs> oh. <laughs> they said to me, Wednesday night we're having a service, but we already had a service in Yerevan. And they said, we just want you to come and lay hands and ordain um, four or five of our new pastors that we're ordaining. And I said to Pastor Ashot, is it going to be time? And he said, oh, John, 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 uh, just quickly, 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 just go lay hands. No prophesy, John, John, no prophesy, John, John. So I said, great, okay. So we go. We go into this little town, Russian-looking town, dark, bleak, it's overcast, it's in the mountains. And we go driving in, and it's like a ghost town. There's tumbleweed blowing down the streets. There's nobody, nobody, can't see anybody, because we don't know where to go. So we're driving, we're looking, we're taking this road, tumbleweed, tumbleweed, go like this, little dog running. It was just like a movie. It was weird. And we're all going like, you know, not a sound, not a sight of a person, nothing. We drive, we drive, we drive. And then we come to a place, and we see there's a big open area in this massive building. Very Russian looking, big marble pillars, you know, like. And we look, we go like, I don't know. We don't see one person in the whole town, not one. So we go, maybe it's here. So we park outside. And remember, it's a very poor country. So we park outside, we walk, we go through these doors, and there's this massive, you know, big hallway, you know, and it's all marble floor. And then we see right across the other side, there's like some curtains, and we can see a little peep of light. And we go walking towards it like this. And, uh, and then... The curtain opens and a young man with a, you know, black longs and white shirt and waistcoat opens it, sees us, closes it again. So we're going like, well, I wonder if it's in there. So we, but he was an usher. So we go and then he opens it again and he calls us. We go in and here is the town hall. Packed. Packed. Every single person in that town is in the town hall. Every single person. There's not a person at home. Every single, there's hundreds of people. The town hall is packed. It goes right up the auditorium, right up like this. There must have been 500 people. So we walk in. The pastor's on the stage. The musicians are on the stage. And uh, I'm, I'm walking in and thinking, this is a one, two, three. Is that, no, there's more than four. Yeah. <laughs> because we're going to lay hands on four pastors and ordain them. But now there's hundreds of people. So the pastor looks and he goes, here is the man. So I'm looking to see where's the man. <laughs> and then he says, come, come, come. And I said, hey, we, you know, we've got to go. Just where's, the, where's the, the pastors? Let me pray for them quickly. But I'm thinking, yeah, so you've got a big church. And then he says, Look, where's the four pastors? He says, no, no, Jean, 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 Jean. Say some few words. Say some few words, Jean. So I said, I said Ashot, can I say a few words? He goes, no, no, just say a few words quickly. So as I stand up like this, I feel something, I turn around, I point to the guitarist, I start prophesying. The power of God hits him, he falls boom, drunk on the floor. Turn around, point to another musician, prophesy, boom, they're on the floor. Then eventually the whole band's on the floor. I turn around and I look and I see someone and I 
point to them, I start prophesying and they healed. Suddenly demons start coming out, the power of God hits the building, uh, people are shaking um, and um, uh, you know, they quickly, people are, are literally running down um, just to be touched for healing. They mobbed us. I think, um, you know, I don't know, but anyway, it's a long story. And, and the people were flocking us to us. They were running with their kids, just putting their kids up just so we could put our hands on the children. The power of God just swept through that building. The entire, because of what that couple came back and said, the entire, the entire town was in the hall that night. The entire town, not just the believers, the unbelievers. They packed the place out. The power of God swept through. We then quickly said, all right, everybody come. I stood with my hand like this. My brother was with me. He stood like his hand like, with his hand like this. And um, the people, they were marching the people and they were lining up and they were just um, aiming them under our hand and running with people under our hand. And as we stood there like this, as they came under our hand, the power of God would fall on them. Demons were coming out. People were getting healed, um, screaming, um, all kinds of things. Eventually the pastor said, we got to go. They grabbed us and they literally picked our feet up off the ground and, and were marching us out of the building. And people were still running and leaning over them just to touch. And that's how we left at home, the entire town in the hall. In the time of rain, ask ye of the Lord, rain. Right now, why don't you just use your heavenly language, your natural language, and just start saying, Jesus, would you pour out your spirit in Port Alfred? Come on, let's just do it together. Shempra nos. Come on, everybody out loud. Let's pray. Come on, pray like people who are thirsty. Lord, we want revival. We want rain. We want you to pour out your spirit. God, we need something here in Port Alfred. Lord, you need to end spiritual drought as well as natural drought. Please, Lord, send the spirit. Send your spirit. Send the blessing. You said that on us and all around us there would be showers showers of blessing showers showers of blessing you said ask ye of the lord in the time of rain the latter rain and he shall send showers showers the shepherd has arrived the shepherd has come lord it's time now for rain it's time for rain Lambro betina lobot kedesina. Send ye the rain, Lord. Send the rain. Thank you, Jesus. So we can pray, amen. We can desire. We can hunger after revival. So the things that I'm telling you, I've seen, I've experienced, I've been there. Um, and, and Armenia was turned upside down. The brother that I prophesied over that stopped in the woods was the same brother who stole my jacket. One meeting, he went and picked my jacket up and he said, he looked at me and said, hey, my, my jacket. So he said, it's staying. You're going back to South Africa, but your jacket's staying right here. That brother was invited to do a Baptist minister's conference. Don't believe in the Holy Spirit. Don't believe in the gifts of the Spirit. And uh, they don't believe in speaking in tongues. He went and did that conference, Baptist conference in Armenia. Every single Baptist pastor of the whole country was there and from Georgia, the, uh, one of the neighboring countries. And uh, he, he then ministered and he said, this is from a friend of mine. He's a prophet from South Africa. He left his jacket here. I'm going to put my, his jacket on you and you're all going to receive the Holy Spirit. He laid my jacket on them and every single one of those Baptist ministers hit the floor speaking in tongues and became charismaniacs. Say thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. But we have Jesus here with us today. Amen. He's more than a jacket. All right. So just very quickly. Are you, got, are you with me now? Just a couple of, couple of things that I want to share. The latter rains. The latter. The former and the latter rains. I just want to reinforce this just very quickly for you to see that um, we are in the right time. Biblically, we are in the right time. And I believe then also spiritually you're in the right time as a church to just receive a fresh outpouring, a fresh deluge of the Holy Spirit. Deuteronomy 11, I'm going to fly. The land you're entering to take over is not like the land of Egypt from which you have come, where you planted your seed, and listen, and you irrigated it by foot as in a vegetable garden. So God was saying, when you're in Egypt, and you planted your vegetables. You had, to, you had to irrigate it with your feet. If you look at the kind of irrigation pumps they had those days, it was like pedal things that they would step. 
So they were, it was effort, it was work, it was labor, and they would be looking down, you know? And then God says, but I'm taking you into another land. The place that I'm taking you, you're not going to have to irrigate it by foot. I'm going to take you into a land, he says, that you're crossing the Jordan to take possession of. It's a land of mountains and valleys that drinks the rain from heaven. And suddenly these people wouldn't be like this. Suddenly they would be like this. Wow. Look up to the sky, it's beginning to rain. A land which the Lord thy God careth for, his eyes are on it. And he says, um, and it shall come to pass... If you obey me, obey my word, he says, I will give you your rain, the rain of your land in its right season, due season, the first rain and the latter rain, the former rain and the latter rain, that thou mayest gather in the corn and the wine and the oil. And there's Jeremiah 5, there's Leviticus 26, there's many other places. And so what God was saying is, I'll give you former rains and latter rains. Former rains, latter rains. Former rains, latter rains. Can I just throw something in here for you? Can I just throw something? Please, can I? Victor, can I? You know? The word for former rain in the Hebrew is more, more. So the former rains would come. Another word for former rain is arrows. So the former rain would come and soften the soil so that they could put the seed in so that it would begin to grow. The latter rains was at the end of the harvest period. That was over a period of six months. The former rains would start sort of October-ish and then the latter rains would end around the month of Nisan, which is April. So it's very interesting that the month of Nisan is what they call the redemption month. It's called resurrection month because Jesus was resurrected in Nisan. And so the former rains, the latter rains would be in the month of Nisan. The former rains was in the month, the same month that the floods opened in Noah's time. Okay, that's a while. Okay, so, and then it would be six months. In that period between the former rains and the latter rains, there would be other showers. Those were called times of refreshing. Acts 3, 19 to 21. When, when the, the Pharisees were there and the Jews were there and the disciples and all of the 120 had been baptized in the Holy Spirit and they came and said, what must we do to be saved? He said, repent and be converted and then he will send you times of refreshing. And then the Lord Jesus will come who was preached to you. The heavens must retain him now and tell the restitution of all things. The word restitution there is the end of the latter rain, when everything has been restituted. It's very interesting that in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 10, this is what Paul says. Paul says the, the, the feasts, the sacrifices that are currently in Israel are only there until the time of the Reformation. So when Jesus came, he reformed everything. He changed everything. That was the Reformation. Then there were seasons of refreshing. And now will come the latter rain. Is that okay? The latter rain matures the crop. The latter rain grows it up. The latter rain prepares it for harvest. The latter rain is so important. And we've experienced the former rain in Jesus. Is that okay? So just very quickly, this is just for those Bible students. And then I'm going to head towards an end. And, and, and that is... It's like I said, I'm circling, I can see the runway. The lights are lining up. Okay, how long will that take? Don't know. But, but the word more, former rains, that doesn't only mean arrows, it doesn't only mean former rains, it also means the righteous teacher. To today, if um, Jews are taught and their rabbi, their instructor comes in, they call him more. They call him former rains. Because another word for former rains is the teacher of righteousness. He's a teacher of righteousness. Can I connect it to a verse for you quickly? Isaiah 55 verse 8. My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. They're higher than your ways. Then he says, so is the word. Listen to it carefully. So is the word that goes out of my mouth. He says, just like the rain and the snow does not return to the heaven without first watering the seed, so the, 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 uh, watering the earth so that it will um, bud, so there will be seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So rain and snow come down, hit the earth, water it, a crop comes up, for us there is seed and bread to eat. Jesus says, uh, uh, Isaiah says this, so is the word that goes out of my mouth. 
it shall not return to me void, but it will accomplish the thing to which I've sent it. Then he says this, instead of the thorn, there will be the fir tree. Instead of the briar, there will be the myrtle tree. In other words, where there's curse, there will be trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. Is that okay? How? Because of the word. My word will go and water. So Jesus came as the teacher of righteousness and his word was, he, that's why he was the word. And when he preached, it brought water. So that was the former rains. Is that okay? How many of you know 2,000 years have passed, we are definitely in the time of the latter rains, the ripening rains. Amen. So just something important about praying in the right time. Do you know that in, in um, Israel they would have two sacrifices every day? Nine o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the afternoon. It was a lamb and incense, and then later it was a lamb again. Nine and three, nine and three. Nine in the morning, three in the evening. Evening sacrifice. Why God did this was to show that 24-7, his blood purifies us. Awake or asleep, 24-7. And so, so the morning sacrifice, the Bible saints knew the best time to pray for miracles was either at nine in the morning or three in the afternoon. They knew that. What time in the afternoon did Elijah stop the prophets of Baal and say, you guys have been going from the morning. You've done all your hocus pocus. Now it's time for me. Remember he built the altar. Remember that story? What time was it? Three o'clock in the afternoon. Exactly the time of the evening sacrifice. He says, God, you're the God who answers by fire. <laughs> fire fell. What time did John, uh, Peter and John go and pray at the gate beautiful when the, when the blind man was healed? Three o'clock in the afternoon. What time was Zechariah in the temple offering the incense when the angel Gabriel appeared to him? Nine o'clock in the morning. The importance of praying in the right time. This Bible saints knew if you pray in the right time, God has to answer. Is that okay? So we are praying in the right time because of the cross of Jesus and the blood of Jesus and because of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, God has to, has to answer. Amen? And so I'm going to start to close. So in Joel chapter 2 and in verse 23, God says, I will give you the former rains moderately. Now, this part I really want you to hear. I'll give you the former rains moderately. Joel 2, 23. I'll give you the former rains moderately. And then I'll give you the latter rains. Listen to what he says. All at once. Joel 2. Then Joel 2, 28. And afterwards I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Sons and daughters will prophesy, etc., etc., etc. So what is God saying in that verse? You have to read it correctly. What God is saying is, I will give you former and latter rains all at the same time when you want it. I'm going to say it again. Everything that I've said, God is saying, I will give you the former rains and the latter rains, and you can have it all at once. It doesn't have to be over a period of time. Whenever you see that you need rain, I will give you the rain because I've poured out my Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2 verse 28, uh, Joel chapter 2 verse 28, when Peter stands up and, and um, it says, this is that in verse 16 that was prophesied by the prophet Joel, this is that. He was saying, this is the former and latter rains at once. You can have it at once. Amen. And so anytime we want, we can have an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Anytime, anytime, at once, at once. We can have it now, you know. I don't know about you, but, but I, I feel like sometimes we need to be like, um, like Elijah. It tells us that in James chapter 5. Elijah, God said to him, no rain at your word. For three and a half years, there was no rain because Elijah said, no rain. And then God said, go back and tell them, rain. And he said, listen, Ahab, hitch up your chariots because I hear the abundance of rain. Then at the word the word of Elijah, he prophesied in three and a half years of drought ended. Three and a half years at his word. So I want to tell you, if you have the word of the Lord, the word, if you have the word, you can start to speak and say, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. Amen. It's beginning to rain. It's beginning to rain. 
um, I just keep feeling drawn to you. That's why I keep coming and standing here. I remember when the building was small and you guys were standing over there somewhere. And um, I didn't know who you were there. And that time I said to you, something like you're going national. You're going national. I want to tell you that the hand of God is upon you because of your integrity and your heart. And, uh, you know, I, I followed you a little bit on the news after that. And I saw Mayor of um, um, Nelson Mandela Bay and then the whole thing happened. I didn't understand. I didn't ask anybody. But I'm telling you, you're going national. I'm telling you now, you're going national. Your political days are far, far, far from over because God needs men of righteousness in place, men of integrity. So it's a little bit like the story of um, Joseph, you know, and um, he, was, he was his dad's blue-eyed boy. I want to tell you, you're God's blue-eyed boy. And, and just, like, just like Joseph was given the coat of many colors. I want to tell you that, that um, God has given you an anointing of many colors. The coat of many colors was a rainbow type of jacket. <laughs> it was a rainbow jacket that God gave you. And God is raising you up for this rainbow nation with his favor um, upon you. So I'm telling you, going national, you will stand national. I believe with all of my heart that we will see you in Parliament. Wearing your coat of many colors. Because it's, it's, almost, like, uh, it's almost like I see you multi-talented. It's almost like I see that there's so much richness in you that you can reach right across the spectrum. You can reach all the nations, all the people groups, all the language groups that make up um, our, our beautiful land, our, our South Africa. So God is raising you up. So just like Joseph, when I stood there, the Lord said to just say this to you because his brothers did things that were treacherous to him and he forgave them. And then this is what he said. This is what he said. You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. So the subversive tactics and everything, the enemy meant for evil, but God is in it and he meant it for good. You will be lifted up again. Just like Joseph, when he was able to, you know, lift up the cup again for the king. Yeah, you will, you will, in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for this couple. Lord, it's been a lot of pressure upon them. And Jesus, right now, as I lay hands on them, Father, I want to just lift the heavy weight that rests upon them, the heavy burden that has been their portion. Jesus, I thank you. You are the glory and the lifter of their heads. The glory and the lifter of their heads. And I thank you that you will lift their heads up again. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Just where you're sitting, just start to say, Lord, just let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. Just pour out your spirit. Just pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit, Lord. Just let it rain. Let it rain. Let it rain, Lord Jesus. Just let it rain. Just let it rain. Come on, Lord Jesus. Just come. Let it rain. Let it rain. Let it rain. Let it rain. I don't want to keep you too long and make you tired, but I just want to bring this to a conclusion and tell you I hear the sound. So, so Elijah went and he prayed seven times the just the, the the symbol of complete prayer and then he sees the rain cloud and he says i hear the sound of the abundance of rain jesus i just ask for rain i ask for rain let let the physical rain fall wouldn't that be an awesome sign if the physical rain started falling upon port alfred as a sign but jesus let your rain let your holy spirit fall in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let your rain fall, 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 let your rain fall in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I just pray for a fresh anointing for Athel and Janine. Just the fresh touch of the Holy Ghost upon them. Anoint them for this new season, this new time, this new thing that you have ahead of them. Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Janine, God's going to do something for you, and it's not going to be so painful and so heavy. I know that a, a wife feels the pain of a husband when they go through things. It's like that, I think, in companies, in ministry, or whatever. And I mean, you feel the pain, you carry it hard, but it's almost like God's going to cotton wool you. Because it's, you know, the, the sense that I get, it would be, you'd be far happier if he was out of politics. <laughs> because it's less, <laughs> it's less hassles, you know. And that's a natural thing. But, but that's the call of God that's on his life. And God is just going to cocoon you. And um, he's going he's to just teach you. And, and my encouragement to you is just to draw into his presence. Because he will protect you. Um, a friend of mine said this when we were going through a difficult time. He said, he said, John, go and lick your wounds in the presence of Jesus. You'll come out roaring. Just get into the presence of God. Don't let it keep you from. When, whenever there's a hint of like, Ish, <laughs> this looks like that, just run into the presence of God. Just get with God and pray. And you will see how God will just cocoon you. Because you will, you will realize where it comes from. It's from the enemy. It's not even necessarily directed at him. It's directed at what he carries. It's the anointing on his life. The spirit of the Antichrist is against the Christ in us. Okay? It's, it's the anointing. Look at Acts chapter 3. After they healed the lame man at, the, um, the, at Gate Beautiful. Then they were called in by the Sanhedrin and the leaders. They were put in jail, all kinds of things. And the, the disciples immediately recognized it. And they said, but this is written in Acts 2. Why do the kings of people and nations rage and they take their stand against the Lord and his anointed one? And they realize they're coming against the anointing. Maybe that'll help you not to take it so personally. But it's against the anointing that he carries to bring in righteousness. Hallelujah. I don't know, what do we do now? Do we stand? What do we do? What should we do? If you want to just sit, sit I'll just come and lay hands on you. Pastor, come with me. Stop, Biki, Willy. Metsu, Biki. Here we go again. Listen, me and oil, we go well together. Shabra dosana. Just start, just start praying. Just start asking the Lord. Just start saying, just a little bit. Last time I think I put too much oil on people's ear. Thank you. You can play. Thank you. It's beautiful. Lambre bedesino Now just cooperate with the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. That's a big key. That's a big key. Just cooperate. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, just get filled with Holy Ghost rain. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. La prabon predikis for Charlie. Brombes dina castanzo moron pokori. Jesus. Just a whole fresh new anointing upon their lives. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Sabra bon predisa namando shteze ke desina mandores. Thank you, Jesus. I hope you don't mind. I'm, I'm breaking a bit of the social distancing. If you don't want yeah, hands laid on you, just show me no. I'll go past you or I'll just touch your hand or whatever. Father, just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. 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 Father, just release your spirit. Just release your spirit. Release your spirit, Father. Just more. Father, pour out your spirit. Father, we're thirsty and dry. Lord, would you just come and fill us, my brother. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Why do I see you preaching? I see you preaching. I see you preaching the word. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Start preaching. Thank you, Jesus. Wherever you get the opportunity out there, friends, preach. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Rabas Nagas. Father, thank you for it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Come on, let's just stand and let's sing um, something. I don't know what we can sing. Show your power, Lord. Show your power. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's good. Cooperate with the anointing. Hey, my brother, how are you? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Are you okay? You strong? I don't know because when I touched you, I saw God was healing something in you. 
your left hip was broken. I could see when you when I, you stood and I touched you, I could see healing was coming upon you. Healing. Jesus wants to heal. So it's uh, this hip. It was broken. Show me. Let me just see how you walk. Come just stand. Okay. Is it painful? Is it painful? Father, I pray. What is your name? Bobby. Bobby, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. You perfect this hip in the name of Jesus. Father, let all pain go right now. Pain go, pain go. Pain get out of this hip, out of Bobby's hip in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Look at me, Bobby. I'm a man of God. I can give you life and healing and wholeness. Okay, so pain is going now, Bobby, out of this hip. Give me your hand again. Let me see. All right, I want you just to walk. Come walk. Walk. How does it feel? Come, let's just see. Let me see. Thank you, Jesus. Just check, 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 check. Just walk a little bit. Walk a little bit. Let me see. Okay, what, Bobby, what was difficult for you to do before? Before I prayed for you, what was difficult to do? What was hard? Was it, it was just painful. And now? Okay, Father, in the name of Jesus, perfected, let all that pain go. All the pain that pain in the name of Jesus let's see let's check let's see how it is tell me mm, thank you very much I feel better thank you so much better. Feeling better yes amen. walk there I want to see you I want to see you walk amen come on give God a hand Woo. hallelujah hallelujah awesome come on let's just raise our hands to the Lord show your power Show your power. Bless you. 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 In the name of Jesus. Power. Oh Lord. Blessed. 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 Bless this little one. Blessed. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Blessed. Blessed.
Jesus. All right, those who I haven't prayed for, just quickly come line up. It'll help me. Just I want to lay hands on you. I want to just release Holy Ghost and rivers and whatever. Just quick, if I haven't laid hands on you. Wow, wow. I'm just waiting for, I'm waiting for you to go like, no pain. I've got free movement. I've got it. Hallelujah. Test it, test it, test it. Thank you. I think it was your oldest son. We prayed for his leg, remember? And then you went back playing cricket. Was it your son? Knees, yeah. Hallelujah. Come stand here quick, 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 quick. Line up. Marcus 3, 3 I said, believe. Thank you. Let's keep going. Show your power. Hallelujah. Come on, whatever God does to you when I lay hands on you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my sister. Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you for your precious, precious anointing, precious anointing, precious anointing. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Double dose of the Holy Ghost. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Show your power. I did lay hands on you. I did lay hands on you. I did lay hands on you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we bless you. Mama, I'm coming to you. Thank you, Lord. Father, we want more water. We want rains. We want those showers of blessing all around us. Thank you, Jesus. Showers. Showers of blessing. Father, we want showers of blessing for Anarchy, Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus, saturate her. Father, we want her footsteps everywhere she walks just to, to shed water, to release the rain. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, thank you, my Father. Thank you, my Father. <laughs> Woo. Let her be a son, a daughter of fresh oil always. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Ghost, Father, just fill. You gotta understand. You gotta understand. Just give me your hand. Stand here. Stand here. Let go. I know you. Just love it so much. But Father, I want to thank you. You gotta understand that you're a lightning rod. You're a lightning conductor. And whenever there's rain, there's a lodestone. And when the lightning strikes, it'll hit the lodestone first. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, he wants some of that holy drunkenness. Shh. Thank you, Jesus. Do it, Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Finish it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for Isabel. Right time, right place. For the time in the kingdom. Sombra, Mambrede, Chicago, Mikrista. Matredas, no preves, no quidas, no preles, no gregues, ni manano, no queda. Come on, it's a new season, and in every new season, there's a new fresh anointing. It's not going to be like before. It's not going to run out, it's not going to end, it's not going to uh, fade out. The Lord says, This is an ever increasing glory. This is a greater glory than you've experienced. This is a latter rain thing. Thank you, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. I will anoint you for ministry and business. Woo! You're going to carry a twofold anointing, twofold anointing, and both are going to be easy. You will flow in it with ease. It will not be a pressure. You will switch from one to the other, one to the other, effortlessly, seamlessly, says the Lord. Lambra betu grumala kesla ambom bregelesh, ni gras odresh di gras do mom bregelis, nan redes da gras do monch de gres. Healing is not going to be difficult. Deliverance will not be difficult. Lamprabes de Gros, I want you to know because of your truthfulness, your uprightness, your integrity, you will set prisoners free. Just in the gentleness of your conversation, just with the look of the eye. Mantres, bukraste, bukres, nanjto, brigiz, lamom, brigales. Those things that you saw in visions in the night years ago. When, when I was passing visions over your, your mind, just like Daniel, just like Job, and you saw these things happening, and you thought that you were being vain, and you were being proud, 
God says now is the time for that vision to come to pass. Those miracles, that power preaching. Limprasto, Meketras, Levech, Zumenju, Gadase, daughter, you're in the right place at the right time, doing exactly the right thing. Be prepared for you to see the fulfillment of that vision in the name of Jesus. Tapras, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. I think I'm finished. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pastor, bless you. Amen. Amen. Can we just sing, show your, show your power? just rain down, rain down on us, Lord. Father, I pray that you'll continually just rain down on us. As we go out into the week, Father, that you just rain down on us. Rain down with your presence, Lord. Father, I thank you for stirring that's just, just been awakened here this week, Lord. And Father, we want more of you. We want more of you. We want all of you, Lord. Jesus. So Father, just have your way in our hearts. Have your way in this place. Have your way in our lives, Lord. Father, I just declare that we won't be the same as what we walked in here, Lord. When we leave this place, we are completely changed, Father. It is impossible not to change in your presence, Lord. So, Father, I just thank you, Lord, that you just rain down on us. You rain down in this place, Lord. Father, I thank you for John and Bev and, and all the seeds that have been sown, Lord, the support. Father, we just bless them in the name of Jesus. And I just get, I just get a picture of both of you with your, your arms around each other and every step you take. Um, I just get a picture of like a gray TV screen and every step you take just green color just burst forth in this grass. And Father, I just declare that, that every step and every place that they go, they are bringing life. They are bringing the life of God there, Father. And we just bless them in the name of Jesus. Father, that they're going to be rivers in the wilderness, Father. And we just thank you for that. We praise you and we honor you, Jesus.
I just feel we want, we want to keep worshipping a bit. Um, but if you need to go, bless you. Um, have an amazing week. We love you. We're praying for you guys. Um, there is an offering box like at the, the desk there. And everything that you feel to give, God bless you. Everything's going to go to, to John and Bev for, for blessing us. Um, they've been a huge blessing. Um, yeah, so God bless you. There will be tea and coffee that side. But we're just going to continue to worship and be in the presence of God. So if you want to stay, if you want to go, God bless you. We love you.